so many famous archaeological sites are along the Nile River that it's actually more practical to see them all on a cruise. And while we aren't cruise people per se, it's the Nile River after all, so why not embrace it and go all in? Follow along as we walk you through everything we know. If, like us, this is your first cruise. We'll share bits from each of the tours we went on. We'll talk about all the costs we've heard at the end of this video. Welcome back to Finding Gina Marie, where we share our lives as full-time travelers and the connections we make along the way. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Judy. And I'm Kevin. We're coming to you from the MS Nile style cruise ship. Based on the timing that we had available, we were limited to a four day, three night cruise from Aswan to Luxor. And we were staying in Luxor when we started, so we actually had to take a train ride down to Aswan and then come back up to where we're going to stay. Yeah, so the Egyptian train. Yeah, it's been um, pretty chaotic morning in general. And you can't buy tickets online. Well, the rest of rest that chaos. So I could just go on the train and buy tickets there. So here we are, waiting to pay for our tickets at some point. We found it easiest to just go ahead and pay for your train tickets while you're on the train to the conductor directly. Our five-star cruise on the MS Nile style was a very nice, fairly modern, mid-priced cruise ship. There are ultra-luxury ships and even more intimate Dahabia cruises, as well as even more budget-friendly options than what we chose. Egypt Tours Portal had a ton of great reviews, so I reached out to them for a quote. They also can arrange transportation from Cairo, but we didn't need that, we were already in Luxor. The tours departing from Luxor are five days and four nights, but they were full on the departure day we needed. The primary difference between Aswan to Luxor is that those are only four day, three night cruises. Because you have more downtime on the longer cruise, you won't run the risk of missing Luxor Temple like we did. But otherwise, they are exactly the same cruise, except for the price. Fortunately, if you don't get all of the activities you want, we've been able to add them on later and that's worked out just fine. Yeah, we'll tell you a little later about how great our guide was and how he helped us. One of the things to be watchful of is that when we first got the quote, it said you could be on any one of these three ships. Well, it mattered to me which yeah. ship we were on. So I didn't put a down payment down until we had a guarantee of which ship we were going to be on. And unlike some bigger cruise ships, all the cabins are identical. They all have windows outside. You're not stuck in a lower level or upper level that you can't see. So you don't have to worry about that. So dressing for this cruise is really flexible when you're on the ship itself. You know, you can be more casual, you can wear shorts, and even if they have a pool, which ours does, you can go swimming, you can have a bathing suit on. Uh, when you're going on the tours though, you're gonna be in the sun a lot. You're gonna be hot. You wanna wear loose fitting clothes. I have been covered up as much as possible. I do have short sleeve shirts on and put a lot of SPF 50 on, but my legs, I wear long pants even on the hotter days because this is Egyptian sun, so be prepared for it. I highly suggest that you wear closed toe shoes. We wore sneakers with socks. Just bear in mind, you're gonna be walking through a bunch of sand and dirt and there's gonna be stones. It's not going to be the best surfaces. So even though we're minimalist travelers where we only have a carry-on and a backpack for this actual cruise we left our carry-ons back in Luxor and we only took backpacks just a few changes of clothing like three shirts a pair of shorts bathing suit and the socks. long pair of pants that yeah. we wore with us and as I alluded to earlier make sure you have sunscreen Egyptian Sun is hot it's constant I even bought a hat while I was here and I did not negotiate well, but I still wanted that hat, so I bought it. Make sure you cover up if you are sensitive to the sun, so even if it's hot out, you may want to put on something that's loose fitting and long sleeves. You may want to bring some sort of anti-diarrheal medicine, just because your gut biome may not be used to it. A few people have had issues on the boat, so you want to protect yourself so you're not miserable during the entire cruise. So again, the ship we are on is the MS Nile style. Ours actually has a roof deck, which was really nice. It had a pool, it has tables up there. They have a little bar that they open up for- Tea events. time. Yeah, tea time. And other ships pass by as we're doing recording. Hello. <laughs> Below the roof deck, there's a fourth floor, which has a, a shopping area. 
And then below that is the third floor, which we were on with our cabin. And then there's the uh, second floor, which is mostly cabins. And then there's a below deck, which is the dining room. The second floor also has a lounge, which is where the evening activities were. The reception is also on the second floor. All the rooms are virtually identical. Ours have twin beds and you can pull them together. There's a nightstand in the middle. They all have a full length uh, window. There's a TV, there's a double desk with an ottoman underneath. Uh, you get two bottles of water every day. And there are three meals a day in the dining room and they're scheduled. They have a schedule posted each day for the activities and when the different meals are. But there wasn't eating between meals. No. So you're really limited between breakfast, lunch, and dinner and they encouraged you to go early. Now our tour company actually set aside three tables. We had 22 people that were part of our group. Yeah, and it worked out really nicely because we actually had a table with eight people, including us. And that kind of got us in the mode of communicating with them on a nightly basis, a daily basis about you know, what's your life like? What are you doing? And we learned a lot about our friends on this tour. All our meals were included in our package price, but drinks were extra. Unless they're just handing you drinks because of happy hour or tea time. Otherwise, you pay for that big bottle of water, you'll pay for sodas, you'll pay for- And alcoholic yeah. beverages as well. Yeah, and in Egypt, there's very few places you actually get alcoholic beverages. So a cruise is kind of a unique experience where I could order a little glass of red wine during dinner time. So this is a cruise ship and they want you to have fun. So every night is a different type of entertainment. Our first night was belly dancer. They did catch us on camera and they did catch me belly dancing with a woman that dragged me off my seat and made me go out there while she sat there and recorded so that she didn't have to go up. Everything for finding Gina Marie. Yeah, oh sure. So leave a note in the comments if you think Judy should have gotten up with me or not. No. <laughs> <laughs> Each tour company will have its own guide. Our guide, Mahmoud, was incredible. He was by far the best tour guide we've had the entire time we've been in Egypt. Yeah, he was there with history, with information, with answers to everything. He was just the man on the spot to know what he was talking about. He also gave us a lot of tips on everything that we need to know about this tour. Not just the uh, sites we're going to, but how to tip, how to handle people, how to get through crowds. And even if you want to buy something, just call me over. I'll help you negotiate. Because he could see that I really sucked at it. He was extremely personable. He spoke excellent English. And he just really had a passion for Egyptian culture. He lives in Luxor. And by far, he did like an outstanding job. We couldn't say enough about him. And we're so thrilled that we got him because you can't always pick the person that's going to be your guide. So on day one, we met up with our most of our group. There was actually a couple of people that were coming in later because they were doing a longer cruise. Our first stop was the Aswan High Dam, which was created in the late 1960s to stop the Nile River flooding. In order to build it, Egypt had to displace 100,000 Nubian people and relocate major archeological sites. It also created Lake Nasser, which is one of the largest man-made lakes in the world. Next, we went to the ancient granite quarry to see the unfinished obelisk. Queen Hatshepsut commissioned it around 1473 BC to be the largest ever obelisk, but it cracked during excavation. And then we went to Philae Temple, which you get to by way of a felucca, which is a smaller boat. And it became like, like a duty. It's a duty for every king to come and add some sitting of so many inscriptions and so many details about the ancient Egyptian recipes. So if riding a felucca is on your bucket list, you don't need to pay extra or arrange a separate tour. It's actually included in a Nile River cruise. So we board the ship and it turns out they don't have enough dock space for every ship at every port. And some ports they have very little space. So you may have five or six boats that are docked next to each other. And these ships are designed so that you can actually walk through them to get to another ship. And they're very polite about making sure you don't have problems connecting between boats. And when you get onto your boat, you can get a card when you need to leave your boat so that they know you're not going to another cruise ship as you're walking through theirs. You hold your card up, it's like, oh, keep going through. But you do get to peek and see what they look like in the other ships. And some are pretty nice and some are like, yeah, I'm glad we got the cruise ship we got. And on our first day when we arrived, we were greeted with fruit juices. And that was just kind of a nice welcome to the ship experience. On our first full day, which was technically our second day, we went to Abu Simbel. Now that wasn't in our tour package, but we added it on. And it was one of those days where it was 4.30 in the morning that we had to get up to get to this temple. 
not everybody wanted to get up at 4.30, so we had a smaller group that went on this tour, and it was a three-hour ride. Technically, we were missing breakfast that day. It's 4.30 in the morning. And so our cruise ship packed us a sack breakfast. It's worth the early hour and long drive to see the Abu Simbel Temple. It originally was cut into a solid rock cliff during the reign of Ramses II, around 1264 BC. But in 1964, it was cut, disassembled, and then moved to higher ground 200 meters away from the shoreline due to the rising water of Lake Nasser. Our first stop for the ship in the evening was Kamambu Temples and the Crocodile Museum. This temple was uh, constructed by the Greeks around 200 BC till 280. We talked about this in our episode about the Nubian village a few weeks ago, and that episode is linked below. Kamambu Temple is unique in that it's a temple built for two gods, the local crocodile-headed god Sobek and the falcon-headed god Horus the Elder. For so many years. For so many years. And by the, by the way, that saved the temple. We also did a quick visit of the Crocodile Museum, which was right next door. The next day was Edfu Temple in the morning. Again, not as early as the last one, but 5.30 was early enough. And we actually took horse and carriage rides to that, which those are the vendors that hit us up the one time we were just going for a little walk to check out things. And we paid the tip at the end, so we waited until we were on the return. One tip is to pay attention to the carriage number because you're going to want to get back on the same carriage that took you out in the first place. The lines for this temple were amazing. Our guide had got us tickets, but you have to, to go through metal scanners. And every cruise ship was there at the same time. And it was so bad that our guide was sitting up there waiting, watching us go through, just shaking his head, couldn't believe what we had to put up with. We got through it. It wasn't ideal. Our tour guide said that this is not Egypt's shining moment. You made it. <laughs> I'm not going to talk. He said it's, it's just really hard for them to rearrange the ships. Like it would be ideal if the ships went on different days, but it would take moving heaven and earth to get that to happen in Egypt. Once we actually got through the line, things were spread out. Yeah. So we weren't on top of one another. The Temple of Horus, the largest temple dedicated to the falcon-headed god, was built here beginning around 237 BC. It's considered to be the best preserved of the ancient Egyptian sanctuaries because it was buried for 200 years under 40 feet of sand and Nile silt. After we got back to the ship and the ship started moving, we were surprised to see little boats keeping up with us and they actually had tow lines hooked up to the ship. And they rowed their way to the ship and then hooked up. Yeah, and they were trying to sell stuff like tablecloths and blankets and scarves. They were shouting to people on the roof deck and putting these things up so you could see what they were and then negotiating a price. Then they'd wrap them up, put them in a plastic bag, and then just throw them up on the roof deck. And then people would look at them, make sure they liked them, agree on the price, put money into a bag, and toss it back down to them. For hours. Part of the process of cruising the Nile River is the locks. There's only one major lock, and they have to queue ships going in both directions. So that delayed our journey, and our guide was trying to make sure that we get as much in as possible. Luxor Temple is newer than Karnak Temple, and it was constructed over hundreds of years by multiple pharaohs as a coronation and burial site. The last day has a lot of activities built into it, especially for people who booked a hot air balloon ride. We did ours when we first arrived in Luxor, and I highly recommend you do that if possible. We heard that for the last week they've been canceled every day because the weather conditions weren't optimal. So even if you do have it scheduled as part of your cruise, you want to make sure you get it in as early as possible. We packed our bags and left the ship at 8 a.m. to head to the Colossi of Memnon. The twin Colossi have stood for 3,500 years and once blanked the entrance to Pharaoh Amenhotep III's lost mortuary temple. Queen Hatshepsut commissioned her mortuary temple around 1470 BC. The main room here, by the way, was dedicated to the god Anubis. She's famous for her power grab and crowning herself as Pharaoh, not a Pharaoh's wife. The Valley of the Kings is the burial ground for 63 kings of ancient Egypt, most notably King Tut. It was built underground in a secluded desert valley to avoid having it be pillaged. Our ticket price allowed us to go inside three of the tombs. 
and those change on a regular basis. You can pay extra to see more, but our guide was very clear about the ones we should go in. No Luxor trip would be complete without a trip to an alabaster shop inside Artisan Village, which is part of the Valley of the Workers, where the original artisans lived, who painted and inscribed the intricate tombs of the Valley of the Kings. We took a felucca boat ride to Banana Island for a delicious Egyptian lunch. We also snapped a group photo before heading to our remaining tour. Our final stop was the Temple of Karnak, which was believed to be the spot where creation began and was built in honor of the god Amun. The sphinxes flanking the entrance represent Amun. It was built over the course of a thousand years and at its peak was the largest and most important religious complex in ancient Egypt. The main room, which is the sanctuary. So Karma Temple was initially started from inside to outside. So this room, or this, this pylon, this gate, is the last one to be built in that And there were two of them. One. Would we do it again? Why not? This has been a great tour. I think it's really hard to fit in all the things, especially when it's your first time. Second time around, you know exactly what to look for, better equipped to handle some of the crowds or some of the things that are happening on these. Hopefully you're better equipped because you're watching this video. We had a great time and the people we met, we hope to have lifelong friendships with them. We've exchanged contact information and really that's for us, the reason that we travel is to make friendships, build connections, and we definitely did that in spades. So what do we pay? Well, we did ours in March, which makes a difference because prices change throughout the year. And we booked ours through Egypt Tours Portal. Our contracted price was $1,200, so $600 per person. Again, that included the cruise itself, all of the tours. And that means the tickets and everything, transportation to and from the tours. At the end of the tour, you're going to tip the crew, and that's about seven to 10 US dollars per person per night. The tip for the horse and carriage driver was between one and two US dollars per person. And also don't forget to tip your guide. So thanks for cruising with us. <laughs> we hope you've enjoyed the view along the route. If you aren't already subscribed, please do so. And take a look at findingenuary.com with articles and information there, Judy's journal. Until next time. Until next time. Uh, the little tips and traits. So in this video, we'll talk a little. Jesus. All right. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, you get it together. <laughs> okay, I'm together. So we are doing a four day, three night cruise from Aswan to Cairo. Nope. <laughs> we are doing a four, <laughs> we are doing. <laughs> Hats, Hatshepsut, Queen Hats, Hatshepsut. A queen. <laughs> queen Hap, Hatshepsut. <laughs> queen H. <laughs> yeah, that's good enough. <laughs>